Lady Butler, God's First Lady, putting God first in your life. This is My Sister's Keeper Place of Refuge, a place where you can be transformed. Here we support, inspire, serve, teach, encourage, respect, and share. Sit back and relax as I bring you into my world, our journey of Sharina Forche Butler, pain transformed into purpose. Enjoy. Lady Butler, God's First Lady, putting God first in your life. This is day number 10, and I'm so excited about this spiritual journey. And as you know, I'm with My Sister's Keeper, Place of Refuge, a place where we transform pain into purpose. And it's not just about me, it's about you. Today is the first interview that I will be doing with my sister in Christ, Sarita Dickens. She's a beautiful woman of God who I've come to meet through a mutual friend. And it's time to hear your story. What type of pain caused you to come to Christ? Or what type of pain are you dealing with today? You're not alone. So it's up to us, my sisters keep a place of refuge, to come into your home to turn pain and transform it into purpose. Now enjoy. And she's going to share with you how she's turned her pain and has turned it into purpose. She's a beautiful young woman. She's a mother of two. And she can cook. When I tell you, I don't give many compliments on cooking. But for our events, she's usually one that donates her services. And when I tell you, she is immaculate. The food is superb. Her house is, I'm here in her home. I can't show you because I know it's a lot of scavengers out there. You know, but... She is a diamond in the rough, and I can't believe that she is still single. Single, a Christian woman of God. I don't understand it. And if if I was a dude, I would be like, "Can you marry me today?" Because she has it going on, and I really can say that not just because she's my friend, but um, I truly believe that there are great women and. Um, you're not going to be discovered just sitting in somebody's four walls every single Sunday just waiting with all the other 15,000 women that's hoping and waiting. No, get yourself out there. Get exposed. You know, this is just a form of witnessing. You never know what God can do. It says uh, a man who findeth a wife. So she's not looking for you. You got to come look for her. And I'm not going to give you any information. <laughs> you got to look. But I will say... You know, she has a testimony, and um, she's going to share that with you guys on today. So, here at My Sister's Keeper Place of Refuge, when I first started, God had placed it upon my heart. A lot of times we attend church, but we're still broken and we're still hurt. And this is not to bash churches, to talk against churches. It's just to show the church how we can infect instead of affect the world. How we can infect people instead of have an effect on how you know, their future reactions or their future should be. And a lot of times we think that we're doing good, but we can cause a lot of damage. So this is just a, a testimony or testimonials that you will see just to help us. You know, a lot of times if we don't know that we're doing something wrong, we can't fix it. So it is our job, you know, to help one another. So on today, Sarita is going to help someone, someone who may be hurting, someone who may be broken, just to let you singles know out there, you're not alone. There are a lot of us going through issues. There are a lot of single people that are battling some strongholds. So she's going to share her testimony with you. So Sarita, tell us how you get through, you know, living a single life in this Christian world today in 2015. So what brings you to my sister's keeper place of refuge, Miss Sarita, the beautiful Miss Sarita. <sighs> well, first and foremost, I just have to give honor to God because he is the orchestrator of all things. Mm -hmm. and he is the one who brought me in the path of 
Mrs. Butler, the founder of My Sister Keeper Place of Refuge. Yes. Um, and also, I'm sorry, Marquisha, you were the inspiration behind all yes, of she this. Was so run from sin. Run from sin, guys. First and foremost, yes. I have to give God thanks for her for, you know, just being a vessel and being able to be used. I thank God. Um, but like many of us out here, you know, although we are in the body of Christ and we love God, you know, we all have testimonies. We're all going through some things. And mm -hmm. um, God said that we're overcomers because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the yes. word of our testimonies. Yes, we do. And I know that I'm not the only one that has gone through some things, but mm -hmm. my testimony, I pray, you know, can encourage, encourage you all. So what is your testimony, Sarita? Well, today, on today, I'm going to be talking to you all about church hurt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Church hurts. Church hurts. <laughs> it, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so how were you hurt by the church? You know. Wow. Where can I start? You know, a lot of times when we we come to Christ, we feel that things are going to be perfect, and mm -hmm. sometimes it has a lot to do with. Uh, our beginning walk with God, you know, it's so beautiful, so lovely, and you just expect that everyone is in that same mold. And I was deceived in the beginning. How were I you was, deceived? I was deceived in believing that this walk with Christ is easy, mm -hmm. that this walk with Christ is a bed of roses, so to say. Um, and it really isn't, you know. So what exactly happened that left a bitter taste in your mouth at that time? Like I said, in the beginning, my per my perception of the church was that it was perfect. And as we all know, nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. Nothing is perfect but God. And um, that's what he had me to realize, that it is a process. And all that we go through it, we have to go through the process. You know, don't give up on the process. Um, and that's really what I want to encourage you all on today. You know, although I've gone through, you know, the backbiting in church and, you know, um, the minister preaching against me. And, you too? Oh, every yes. Sunday. <laughs> yes. Every Sunday. We call that throw off. Go ahead. And, and that, that truly does hurt. And, yes, it um, does. You know, at it leaves scars. It it really does, cause I was hurt for a whole year behind this, and year I was afraid to go amongst Christian people, much less mm. the church. And I stayed away from the church, and I asked God. I said, God, you know, why was I so hurt mm -hmm. in the church by people that I loved? You know, I I've grown to have loved those people that I fellowship with. And for a while, God never responded. And then after a while, he said to me, I took my eyes off of him. Mm. And that was just a distraction, you know? Everything that was going on around me was the enemy's opportunity to keep me distracted or to get me distracted, rather. Okay. So how... So how do you survive in the church being affected by church hurt, and you know when you're hurt, there comes loneliness, you know, and you want to feel loved. How do you survive before you, you know, got over that particular situation as a single woman in church? How do you get through those lonely nights when you're hurting and there's no one there? Well, you know, first and foremost, God had to make me realize that my walk with him is singular. <laughs> mm. My walk with him is not contiguous on the pastor, the members in the church. Um, it's solely between him and I. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what he had me to realize. You know, distractions are there ultimately to, you know, allow us to see pretty much what we're working with. Are we for God? Are we for God? Or are we really, you know, we have our alternative motives? You know, God had me to realize that. It's him and all of him. <laughs> <laughs> you dealt with that you probably were afraid, you know, to share with others at that moment and at that time. Well, um, I have to revert back to the church hurt because church was, you know, at that particular time, all that I had, you know, when mm -hmm. my mother 
had passed away and I felt like. And how long um, has it been since your mother passed? My mother passed away in 09, so about okay. six years, five, one to six years. So how did that affect you? What scars did that leave, you know, wow. since her death? That was abandonment, you know, because okay. you only get one mom. And regardless of how the relationship is with you and your mom, mm -hmm. you know it is your mom. And when you lose your mom, that's that's pretty much it. So a sense of abandonment. Okay. And being a mother of two, um, did that affect you in any way concerning the relationship now with your children? Absolutely. Absolutely. It affected me um, to the point where... I really didn't know how to give advice to mm -hmm. my kids, you know, how to honestly make them understand what it was that they would see me, the pain that I was going through behind losing my mom. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really explain it to them. But okay. What really helped me was the church. Okay. So that sends out a little bit of mixed emotions. In one sentence, you said that, um, the church hurt you, but then it helped you. So there is, you know, two different sides to the church, not saying that it's all bad. So how or what was the good that came out of your situation? Well, absolutely. Um, in the beginning of our interview, I explained to you guys that everything in the beginning is, you know, it seems peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. It seems wonderful at first. But what happens when, you know, the heat, is turned up you know what happens when you begin you begin to grow um, in the things of God um, it's not always easy to endure you know members uh, possibly talking against you for no apparent reason it's not easy to sit and endure mm -hmm. things that are like that you know in the church because your perspective and your understanding is that you know people are in the body of Christ are to love one another as the Bible instructs us to do and a lot of times you will find that that's not what ha that's not what's happening. So what God had me to understand is that, you know, I'm the driver. I'm the driver in my life. I can't let anyone dictate, you know, where I'm going to go and how I am to feel. Hmm. Interesting. So I have another question, though. You know, there are a lot of, you know, scavengers that come to church looking for those single beautiful women. What do you say that is a big turnoff when it comes to, you know, guys in the church and them trying to find themselves a wife? They normally come up and say, God said that you're going to be my wife. God said, you know, I saw you in a dream, you wow. know, or... um. <laughs> Oh, those constant inboxes, those <laughs> annoying, you know, um, pictures and those. <sighs> How is it for you? <laughs> wow, it's funny that you would mention this because I was sharing with another sister in Christ. I was like, oh, in my beginning walk with Christ back in 2010, it hasn't been very long, mm -hmm. but I was very naive. <laughs> <laughs> I must say. I was very naive and because the Bible would tell us that we are to marry, mm -hmm. you know, and not live in fornication. That's what I pledge to live by. I pledge to live by, you know, the book of God. And because of this, people can recognize when, you know, yeah, yeah, you refresh me. <laughs> <laughs> so to say because it's one it's like a trigger a signal <laughs> yes like stamps on my forehead <laughs> i was targeted by one individual in my early walk with christ and um i was i was so convinced that he was my husband only for the mere fact that i guess he was the first person to approach him so i'm like yes he gotta be the one I always fall for that first <laughs> yes. and i did fall hard i did i, I remember one Very time hard. i thought i was gonna be so holy i was like i am uh i am not finna fall and i had sex before then i'm not gonna lie even me being a bishop's daughter and um when i got back into the church and I was like, uh-uh, abstinence it is. I preached abstinence. Oh, no, I am going for the Lord. And then Mr. Wright came along. And 
it's just something about temptation. I don't care how holy you think that you are, no matter how much you pray. And if you set yourself up to fail, you will fall. You will fall very hard. Oh, so yes. Satan knew who to bring to me. And um, sin, I don't know who a lot of said sin feels bad. It feels good. So the consequences. It will mess you up. So, the consequences is bad. But the way... I would say when I did fall, I felt really bad. Mm -hmm. I felt so convicted. I couldn't even hide it. I went to the church and just went to my pastor that time and just cried. And I was like, oh, my God. All she did was just hug me and say, don't worry about it, baby. Brush yourself off and get up. But I felt so bad to the point where I was like, I felt like I let God down. Mm -hmm. But that's the beautiful thing about him is, is that he throws your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. It's us who keep bringing our sins back up. Now I had a choice. Either I could have continued, which, you know, I end up slipping up again. But then I had to really make that choice and say, you know what? I can't because I thought about, you know, AIDS. I thought about diseases, which a lot of people don't. You know, and I thought about the consequences of letting my father down in heaven. It wasn't about man. You know what? But just to know that I didn't want to let God down. That's what meant most to me. Even now when I get ready to do certain things, I think about, you know, his gifting, his anointing, his power. Just like, you know what? I don't want to risk, you know, that person, you know, having that on me to say so you make it more mindful of the your actions and the things that you do. You're more conscious of it. Yes. You know, but child, <laughs> thank God I got married because I don't I don't think that you know. Um, it, well, sex and intercourse never really bothered me. That's like some people are high nature. Some women, I've never been that type of woman, mm -hmm. so I can't really say or testify to that because I've always been so focused on. You know, uh, making things happen mm -hmm. that never, I never think I really sat still to really go through that, right. you know, but for other women, I hear that that is really something hard, you know, that they deal with, you know, and sometimes like, I wish I was like, <laughs> <laughs> because I was so sheltered, right. you know, I was very sheltered and, um, I didn't have that, that type of upbringing mm -hmm. where I saw a lot of, you know, um, women, which, not saying that you are, but I do mm -hmm. see a lot of women who feel as though they have to sleep with, you know, a certain amount of men because their mothers trained them how to go out there and sleep with men to get money. I've never had that. You know, my mom was like, you meet that person, person like, as the Bible said, and that's the person you stick with. So it kind of, it was a good thing, mm -hmm. but it kind of messed you up in a way because you ended up sticking with losers until I knew better. But there are a lot of women who have been trained from, you know, their mom growing up that they have to continue to sell themselves to find that Mr. Right to pay your bills. So how do you survive? You know, not it doesn't have to be, you know, dealing with a Christian, you know, but women, period. How do you survive being a mother of two, you know, working part time? How do you get by without um, having to survive off of, you know, sleeping with a man to get money? Oh, yes. Oh, glory. But before I go to that, um, just to wrap up that individual who I was naive for, nevertheless, I scared him. So he ran away. <laughs> and I told him, look, you're supposed to be my husband just on the basis of the Bible. You know, I wasn't going to talk to anyone and check up. Mm -hmm. and the Bible said, you must marry, you must marry. So you're pretty much my husband is what I explained to him. And he ran. And he ran for three years. And just recently, it's funny that you, you should ask me about this situation. Because he came back into the picture and he's like, you know, God has spoke to me. And he told me that you're the one. <laughs> really? After three years, God spoke to me. <laughs> wow. God spoke to him. And mm -hmm. I, I laugh. I laugh. I said, sir, I'm not at the same place I was three, <laughs> four years ago. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you... In the beginning, yes, you're naive, but you you are to grow in the things of God. Yes. And I've grown past manipulation. Yes. Because that's what it was. Manipulation. Mm -hmm. I guess the grass <laughs> wasn't greener on the other side. <laughs> so I, I guess it, it sure wasn't. And I told wow. him quick, and he was upset because I was supposed to stay as ignorant as he. Mm. Oh, God, I hate to say that, but... For him to have approached me like that, um, it wasn't nah, bruh. 
It wasn't cool. That so, one's better. Yeah, that was the end of that. But like my sister asked me, how do I stay, you know, being able to maintain for myself and my kids without having to prostitute myself, without having to sell my soul? Mm -hmm. The simple and basic answer to that is I trust God. And it's not easy, but I have no other way. I mean, there's no other choice for me. I have to trust God. And I'm happy to say today, I'm totally dependent on him. Totally. And the beautiful thing is, one thing that I just noticed, when my sisters keep a place of refuge, one of my logos and my models that I use are the pearls. And the reason that I use the butterfly is for transformation. But the pearls symbolize um, pain. Mm -hmm. Because pearls are developed out of pain. So you will always see me wearing pearls as a reminder as to the pain that I endured that turned into <laughs> purpose. And as I'm looking, you are wearing your lovely pearls. I'm dependent on God. I usually don't wear pearls. He instructed me to put them on and I said, okay. He yes. dressed me today. He told me to put on <laughs> these jeans and my sis has never seen me in the jeans. I'm wow. always in a dress or a skirt. I have on jeans today and this blouse. See, Instructing me to Matter of fact, let's see them jeans. Come on, let's stand up. Let's see them jeans. Go ahead and model for us. I'm in my chain. The lovely Miss Sarita. And she's modeling for us on today. And she's thanking God that he is good. And who are these two children here on the table? My pride and joy. My pain that transformed into purpose. Our two babies. Love, 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 love. I love, love what you have here. It says, sing like no one's listening. Dance like nobody's watching. And love like you've been, I'm sorry. Love like you've, you've never, never been, been hurt. So how you Have doing? to. Have to. Love like you've never been hurt. That's the most powerful statement because we all have been hurt. We all have gone through things. But we can't let those things dictate to us where God ultimately wants us to be. And it's really to hit that goal up on yonder. Amen. 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 So can you close us out in a little on today for this great opportunity to glorify your name, Father God, because it is all because of you. Why I stand, why I'm able to speak, why I'm able to even think. Mighty God, I thank you. Father God, I speak to those individuals, Father God, who are suffering church hurt, mighty God. Father God, those individuals who feel like they don't want to go back to the church because of something that the pastor has said, or perhaps maybe something that a member in the church have a... Look upon your face